2014's Black Coal Thin Ice definitively won me over in the span of a single scene. Suspense and intrigue are built with such grace here. It's haunting precisely because it gives us so little. At this point in the story, there's as much evidence for this woman being a criminal as there is for her being a tragic victim. So where is she leading us? Instead of suspenseful strings rising, the comforting familiarity of a classical song everyone's heard at least once is softly dying away, as is the warm lighting. We drift into darkness, away from the crowd and towards the unknown. It milks its unique setting and environment for all it's worth. Diao Yanan effortlessly creates thick, enveloping atmospheres that feel fresh and unique. They're the glue that hold his subversive neo-noirs together. The way he mines a given location's immersive and even surreal qualities serves in place of other evocative noir staples that externalize the emotions of characters, like voiceover, music, or a dark rainy city. The atmosphere of Black Coal Thin Ice, a title I love, speaks for its characters as often as it seems indifferent to them. The grungy factories and chilly streets of the Heilongjiang province live and breathe independently of the central drama. These places continue to exist outside the frame rather than feeling structured around it. The randomness of life doesn't care about this hard-boiled story or those who propel it. Life does not stop and start in your convenience, you miserable uh... piece of shit. Harsh revelations might be followed by a patron randomly freaking out at an internet cafe, or a stray horse showing up in an office. A goosebump-inducing time jump introducing our brooding cop's descent into alcoholism becomes cruelly funny when even worse luck befalls him. The discovery of body parts in a local coal factory leads to a frightening shootout with potential suspects, traumatizing Detective Zhang Zili. He was already dealing with a complicated divorce to boot. The dismembered victim is identified and his ashes are returned to the widow, Wu. But murders with the same MO continue years on, and Zhang, now a lowly security guard, is drawn back in. His interest in the case, and in Wu, deepening. The film avoids being convoluted, a common pitfall of even the best films in this genre, by telling its story primarily through visuals. Yanan is a big fan of Hitchcock, and as in Vertigo, we spend a lot of the film following the detectives and seeing exactly what they see. We put together clues, observe routines, and make deductions with them. Often single shots will tell us a complete story or something important about the characters. Some of the match cutting has incredible depth. The connections it draws between events and characters works on an almost subconscious level. So here's a broad recent epiphany. You can get away with a simple dialogue scene in a car or at a table, maybe once in a movie. Even if your dialogue is really solid, it's hard for these environments and settings not to play very static, and this is the most visual medium there is. It also just feels contrived to a certain extent. There's stuff we need to tell you, so now the characters go on a drive or sit down and tell you about it. What about college? What happened there? I am also very, very, very guilty of this as a filmmaker, so I will self-apply this one in the future. Suffice to say, when dialogue is necessary, Yanan avoids this. He sets longer conversations in dynamic backdrops that figure into the routines of the characters, with an ambience that contributes to the scene. Sometimes the environment is so unique it ends up dictating how a scene plays out in a subversive way. One sequence where Zhang is tailing a suspect accomplishes this while remaining consistent with the other themes I've discussed so far. It goes from a packed bus where the indifferent riders complain about his shoving, to a moody dance hall full of couples. A specific location that plays on Zhang's loneliness and relationship insecurity. Though the best example might be a climactic encounter set on a ferris wheel, unfolding in the most classic film noir shot of the entire movie as the personal and professional collide. Yet it ends in an awkward, clumsy fuck in the carriage because where else are they gonna go? The hookup happens far above a location that drops a whopper of a puzzle piece into Zhang's lap. Wu was complicit in the murders via a complicated situation of self-defense and switched identities. 
Their relationship and the story are brought full circle simultaneously. The Daylight Fireworks Club is the most cheerily ironic location possible to represent someone's guilt and ultimate undoing, something Yanan later doubles down on in the film's final moments. Black Coal Thin Ice is saturated with irony. In its smallest moments, And in the grander narrative, now that they're both lonely and their personal and professional lives have been destroyed by the murders that connect them, Zhang and Wu could give each other some kind of solace. But they're too stuck in their routines, determined for revenge, and committed to institutional and personal codes to do that. Zhang remains a hot mess of a bachelor, and we last see him alone, again, in a room of dancing couples. The film ends in Wu's drawn-out confession and defeat. How does the environment respond to that? With fireworks.